This is what a $1,000 gaming setup looks like in 2022, complete with peripherals and monitor. And we're gonna be going through all of this today. Now the PC that's at the heart of what we're showing off today is actually an upgrade from a previous video that we did where we had a $500 PC build, but we made a few key enhancements that we'll talk about in just a second. We really wanted to try to target 1080p high refresh rate gaming, which is why at the heart of the gaming setup, we have the brand new ASRock Phantom Gaming 27 inch 1080p 165 hertz monitor. The PG27 FF1A has tons of great features to make it the centerpiece of any gaming setups. Not only does it have those spec sheets that I mentioned, but it also has a one millisecond response time, 94% of the DCI-P3 color space so that it can be usable for work productivity, not just gaming. It's got AMD FreeSync Premium to help keep your gaming flicker free, and it also supports HDR10. And combined with the rest of the components, the gaming experience on this was really good. You can see we kept to a black and white theme for the entire setup. The mouse pad is actually from Ed Tech Source for, on his Deal Source website. It only costs $30, but it's the topographical white setup. The mouse is the Logitech G502 Hero Special Edition coming in black and white and actually has primarily dark colors with white accents, which is a great contrast to the keyboard that we chose, which is primarily white with black accents. And that's the Hexgear X3 TKL. Now this is a wireless mechanical keyboard coming with kale blue switches, which sound great, feel great while typing. I absolutely really enjoyed this, especially at the price point that we got it at of only $65. And then to complement with the headset, we had to go with the Razer Kyra X, which costs only about $40, but this is the Xbox One edition. It works perfectly fine with the PC. It's just that the cable is slightly shorter because it's meant to be plugged into the controller while you're playing on the console, but I didn't have any issues with the setup that I'm at. If you want to move your PC a little bit further away, maybe the Xbox edition wouldn't work well for you you, but at only $40, it was a steal. So as mentioned, the PC that we have in this setup is from the $500 build guide that we did previously with an i310 100F and an RX 580, but we've made a few improvements. Number one, we added in a white CPU cooler for only an extra $20 to help cool that i310 100F and also complete the design scheme that's going on here. And then for the GPU, we also made a key upgrade here, and I'm very excited about this. This is a GTX 1080 Founders Edition, but this one is special because we actually found somebody who's selling this used where they had already painted it white. So instead of this being silver and kind of clashing with the white that's already going on, it's been painted and matches the color scheme perfectly. And just to round out the rest of the specs, just so you know, you can go watch the full video right up there, but we have 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM, a Samsung 970 Evo Plus that we got for only $70. The Thermaltake Versa H18 is the case that it's in for 48 bucks. The motherboard's the Gigabyte B460M, which we got for $66. We added in a five pack of up here white fans, as well as the Asia Horse extension cables. And then the power supply is an EVGA 600BR. And the GTX 1080 is actually really great for this setup because we knew that we were gonna be working with this ASRock Phantom Gaming Monitor. So having a highly capable 1080p high refresh rate monitor matched with a highly capable 1080p high refresh rate GPU was of the utmost importance and the 1080 fits that bill very nicely. So now you add in the price point of $190 for the GPU, 20 bucks for the CPU cooler, plus all of the peripherals that we got, and our total price point comes in at $972 to have some really good 1080p gaming, especially in AAA titles, as well as it not sweating it at all in eSports titles. Now I know there might be some concern in the comments about pairing an i3 processor with a GTX 1080, but I want you to think for a second. When this graphics card came out, the peak CPU that you could get was an i7-6700K, which was four cores and eight threads and had roughly a four gigahertz to 4.5 gigahertz boost clock. The i3-10100F is four cores, eight threads, and boosts to all cores on 4.1 gigahertz while under load. So the processor that's in here is actually com very comparable to a top of the line processor back when the 1080 came out when it was a top of the line card. So this is actually a really beefy system from 2015 that's still capable of video games today. So let's go ahead and look at the benchmarks on all of that. Cyberpunk 2077 on high settings at 1080p, we managed to hit 66 FPS average, which is more than playable with the game looking phenomenal. God. 
God of War, we managed 69.9 FPS average, again at 1080p high settings. Spider-Man, we managed 65.2 FPS average. In Fortnite, we averaged 85.7 FPS. And in Valorant, the most CPU bottleneck of the entire experience, we averaged 175 FPS. So it's clear that this system with the 1080, the i3-10100F is perfectly capable of AAA games at high settings as well as modern esports titles hitting that 165 hertz refresh rate that's being supported by the ASRock 27 inch Phantom Gaming Monitor. They are a great combo. And if you take a look at the CPU and GPU utilization in the more AAA titles, you can actually see that both the CPU and the GPU are close to 80 to 90% utilization, which means neither of them is a bottleneck in that situation. It looks like they're perfectly in sync and made for each other and it's only in more cpu bound titles like valorant or csgo that you might see the i3 10100f slow down what you could potentially get out of the gtx 1080 but other than that this is a great looking one thousand dollar setup that you could build right now the 190 dollars price point on the gtx 1080 was not a steal it wasn't something that you can't replicate yourself you can absolutely pick up everything that we have in this pc build for yourself in case you want to replicate it and with how good it looks i would highly recommend you do that and we'll have links for all of these parts in the video description but let us know what price point you want us to tackle next in a setup guide like this we'd love to hear from you down below in the comments